participated with tidbits from the Word. I'd like to speak a few minutes about grief. Almost every person that I know has got any age at all on them have had times of a loved one passing on. Some killed in a car wreck, some dying of heart attacks, some dying for some mysterious way, some being killed by another person, or but have lost a loved one. This is a heartbreak in a time of grief. There is only one person that could uh, ever relieve you of that grief instantly uh, in that period of time. Then that's the Holy Spirit. Another person can say anything he wants to say, do anything he wants to do, try any way he wants to try. He can't console you in that time of grief, in that part of your heart. But he, he can let you know that he's there for you in that time and would like to uh, share some of that grief with you and try to help you a little bit. One of the main causes of uh, grief is death. Uh, it's a time of loneliness. When a person feels like they're all alone. Everybody's forsaken them. Nobody's ever felt this before. Well, I got news for you. Everybody has felt it or will feel it before they die. And, and, but God is the place where the consolers come in. He is the ultimate consoler for the heart. Tragedy, uh, we must not blame God for tragedies. Tragedies happen. If that person is saved, the tragedy happened too. It can be beneficial for that person that the tragedy happened to. If he is saved, he's going to be with the Father to live forever from now on. And away from the misery that can come on this earth, even if that person be young. God knew the future of that person. If the person should be a young person that has left you with a grief, just remember, God knows what he's doing, and that person could have had something drastically happened in his life would have caused him maybe to go to hell or do something and the Lord saved him uh, out of that circumstance by taking him when he was young. Uh, the killer of human bodies is Satan. He's the one that kills. God made life and he made life eternal. Satan comes along, kills human bodies, human bodies die, and they soul and spirit go to live with God forever in heaven, or go live with Satan forever in hell, uh, one place or the other. God can work redemptively in the situation and give grace, and, and sufficient grace, in this time of need. God will give sufficient grace. I lost my father some 30 years ago. I lost my mother some seven months ago. God has given me grace in those times that I have pictures all over my office here of mom and daddy at different times and I look at them and think about them uh, at periodically through the day. <coughs> God, <coughs> but God's blessing is going to come and give you an experience of <coughs> deliverance of grief sometimes. There are different kinds of grief. Because I mentioned the hardest one first. That's the loss of a loved one. Uh, you cut a finger off and you're going to have grief. And uh, you'll probably have grief the rest of your life because the finger's gone. And everything you do with your hand is say, oh, I wish I had that finger. Oh, I wish I had that finger. If, you ha if you've lost a leg and you've got to walk with crutches, you say, oh, I wish I had that leg. And you have a type of grief over that. We have to experience Jesus Christ personally, the Holy Spirit personally within our heart in order to be able to overcome grief. Let's look at some scriptures. Joshua 1 and 9. We've read that uh, in some of our other excerpts. I've used that before. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. And whatsoever thou doest. And, uh, and on and on and on and on. The grace of the God of heaven that created us is with us and will guide us and lead us throughout our life and even despite the things that come at us. Nehemiah 8 and 10 
neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We must get that joy from God back if we're in a time of grief. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Psalm 32, 11. Uh, Isaiah 57, 1. The righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Hey, God can deliver us from the evil to come before it comes, even though it's going to come. There is going to be, if we live long, there's going to be an evil come at us one day. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. And in Jeremiah 49, 11, he said, Let the widows trust in the Lord. The widows. Who is a widow? A widow is somebody who has lost her husband. She has lost her husband, and now she is a widow. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare that place for you, that's us, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. This is a promise, John 14, 1 through 3, a promise that you and I will go We'll be with Jesus. We will raise from the dead just as he did. We will bodily stand before the Father in the presence of the Lord, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. We will stand there and we will be in his presence forevermore. Wow. Man, that is something. Willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. I am willing right now to be absent from this body and be present with the Lord. Wow. Are you willing to do that? Are you ready? Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, come in your heart and save your soul? Then you're ready. All right. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. You can be sorrowful that you lost a loved one. You can be sorrowful about many, many things, but always rejoice. Underneath that sorrow, over that sorrow, around that sorrow, you can rejoice in the Lord. And that's what you're supposed to do. Put your rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say again, rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. He said, I wouldn't have you to be ignorant, brother, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, that those who are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, we have hope. If our loved ones are in Jesus Christ and they've gone on, we have hope we're going to see with them again. We're going to be with them again for eternity. And that's what the Lord said. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, all them that sleep in Jesus, that's who we consider dead, Jesus said their bodies sleep, will come again with him we which are alive and remain in that day, the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent those which are asleep. They're going to come with him. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a show, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Somebody said, how come the dead rise first? Well, they got six feet further to rise, <laughs> so God gives them a head start. So, uh, yeah, they, they will rise first. Then we which remain shall be caught up in the twinkling of an eye to ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you're in your time of grief, get First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 out and read it. And take it to heart. If you're a saved person, you are going to go be with the Lord. There will be no more grief, no more heartache, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more anything that we know on this earth as human beings 
the way it is. I must go now. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. See you next time. Bye-bye.